Hi everyone, today's video is going to look at the software end of how to do something called photo stitching or photo panorama uh, work. What it, what it is is we're going to take uh, a series of photographs, a series of images, whatever you want to call them, that we've taken uh, of, a of a single subject and we're going to combine them into a single image that is very large, very high resolution, and the purpose of this is to allow us to capture more with a lens than we could by just taking a single image of it. So this video covers just the software end. It's done outside of the camera in post-processing. It doesn't cover the technique of how to do the initial image capturing. That's going to be in a, a subsequent video. First thing we're going to do is go over here to uh, not that, this one. Here's our file. These are the images we're going to merge together into a single image. And you can see there's some flaws in this. There are some color differences between the images, and that was a flaw in me taking the images, uh, one which won't be repeated when I do the technique video. So I'm going to copy with Control C this file pathway. I'm going to come back here to Photoshop. We're going to go File, Automate, and Photo Merge. Now this is Photoshop CS4. Um, I know that CS3 had this feature, but I don't know about anything prior to that. Everything since CS4, CS5 and 6 also have this feature. And in fact, it's pretty much the same, um, but I've, I've photo stitched the same files together in CS4 and CS6 and haven't noticed any difference in the output. Uh, so I don't know if this feature was changed or modified between the different versions. So what I did, here I'll do that again for you. So we're going to go into now into Browse. This is where we select the photos. I'm going to hit Control V to paste this uh, the file pathway into the file name, and that's going to take us directly to the folder that we want to be at. Now there, we're going to select all the photos in this. You can either click the first photo, scroll down to the bottom, hold Shift and click this. That selects all of them. Or you can just hit Control A. It's easier. It selects all of them. Open. Okay. Now what the software is going to do is it's going to open all of these files into uh, a single, all these individual images into a single file. And it's going to start analyzing the content to determine how they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. It's then going to create custom masks to select content from each of the images. And they're not necessarily going to be squares. They're going to be all different shapes. And some images might be uh, might have small multiple locations selected, but not even the whole image. And uh, then it's going to put them together into a larger a larger image. So this takes a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is pause the recording, and we're going to come back and take a look at this once these have assembled into a single image. All right, so here is the stitched image uh, that we took that Photoshop assembled from all of those images. Now you can see it did not assemble a perfectly square image, and the reason is because it stretched the individual images to create um, the most logical perspective. So the image that was taken of the sky has been warped to meet the perspective, excuse me, of the image taken of San Francisco. You may or not may or may not be able to see this on your video, but there are very thin white lines separating the boundaries of the different photos. Those disappear when the image is flattened. You might be able to see it down here. And over here you can see the different layer masks. So what it did was it opened all the different photos into alignment and then created a layer mask that kept only the part of the photo that was needed to create the panorama, or a stitch, however you want to call it. You can see uh, some of the photos, nothing was kept, some very little, and some had a lot more that was kept. Now, another problem is you can see, one of the problems, you can see that there's some, some purple up here. This is a problem with the way the images were captured originally, and that's just life with this one. Uh, that's why it's, it's not a successful panorama because of these color issues over here. And then another thing to bear in mind is you need to have a very, very clean sensor whenever you take uh, multiple photos to stitch together because if you have any dirt on your sensor, like this, it's going to be repeated every time you have a photo. 
which means if you take 20, 30, or 60 images and that dot comes back every single time, you're going to have that much more work to do to clean up the final image. And they really, these, dirt, these little specks really, really show up on, in skies, uh, cloud banks, and anything else that has a uniform color. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this image because I want to be able to edit it. And as you can see, all those little, little lines in the image just disappeared. It's become a, a seamless, cohesive image. And the background has become white because this is just void space. There's nothing there. So it's, there's a little bit of distortion in here that we're going to correct in just a minute. But the first thing that I want to do is go with the spot healing brush. Get rid of that spot. Get rid of that spot. So those really annoy me. I'm going to see, go with filter, distort, lens correction. I'm going to put about a negative seven key, keystone in here. And as you can see, that just makes the buildings a little bit more vertical. We've got one Rincon Hill over here, which is vertical. And now over here, you can see with the, um, what was that called? The uh, Transamerica Tower, that's closer to vertical. This tower, uh, communications tower, is closer to vertical. Millennium Tower, again, then that just makes it a slightly more pleasing composition. You can see the finished product here. I'm going to flatten this again because that filter causes, it creates a, sec a second layer. And now that that editing is done, we're going to, uh, let's see, zero, forgot to reset my, uh, forgot to reset my, my crop. I'll just hit clear, that's right. All right. Now this will allow us to crop out whatever we don't want. So I'm going to crop this into the maximum image uh, possible without having any of the negative space. There we go. Now that gives us our basic image. From here, this is a really, really high resolution image. Now my monitor is a 27 inch monitor and it's at 12 and a half percent. To give you a better understanding, the image size of this is 6889 pixels by 5976. And what that is, times 5946, that is a 40 megapixel image. And to get that, you calculate that by multiplying the two, the, the two dimensions, and that gives you the megapixels, 40.96. So it's effectively a 41 megapixel photo that's been created by stitching together about 10 14.6 megapixel images. And it's, it, it doesn't become a 140 megapixel image because there's a lot of overlap. So um, not only is it a 40 megapixel image, it's a very high resolution 40 megapixel image. So we're going to zoom into, a, oh, I missed one. Let's get rid of that. Zoom into 100% here. Oops, wrong way. And you can see the blimp uh, that was hanging out over AT&T Park during the, the game when this picture was taken. You can see the detail of the individual windows in these buildings. And if this had been a single image in 14.6 megapixels, it would look a little bit more like this at 100%. You could still make out the details, but they wouldn't be as sharp as they are right now. So this, this technique is really good for getting very sharp, high-resolution images. Uh, so hopefully I didn't lose too much of that. I think I accidentally hit the pause button. But this, this technique is very good for, hitting, for getting uh, high-resolution images. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to correct, uh, we're going to correct some of this. And I'm going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, and L to do an auto-correction that does auto contrast. And that just makes the colors pop a little bit more by co correcting the contrast. So you can see the two differences there. Now I'm going to hit Control Shift L, that's automatic tone correction. I don't really like the way that turned out. A lot of the detail up here has just been washed out. Uh, it really makes this purple stand out over here. So I'm going to undo that. We still have slightly a slightly blue cast to most of the image though. I'm going to go into Adjustments, Curves, Blue, and 
and just going to play around with this until we find something that we like. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks much better. I'm going to go into red. I think I grabbed the wrong side of the... Uh, yeah, I did. Grab the wrong side of the curve. So, slightly aqua, aquamarine cast now, but that's better than what it was. I'm going to hit Control Alt Shift again. Nothing happens. Good. Undo that. Next and last thing we're going to do, and remember, anytime you edit stuff, you always sharpen last. So, we're going to go into the Unsharp Mask. And you can see going back and forth, no mask preview. It's modestly, modestly sharper. Uh, this is a pretty conservative 15% with a 20 pixel radius sharpening for an image of this size. Could really crank it up a lot to the point where it's garish and looks silly. 20 pixels. We could probably get away with 25% on an image like this, but I'm going to keep it 15 because I don't like to over sharpen images. Click OK. And that's our final image. Still have some purple up here. So, and I don't like having this half tower. So let's crop that. Gets rid of some of the purple. Take out a little bit of this hill just for aesthetics. Not quite that much. There we go. Crop. Finished product. Now stick around after this video and uh, I'll show you some more photos that I've taken with this technique, uh, all done with post-processing. And in a future video what I'll do is I'll actually take my camera outside and we'll do a multiple photo stitch of a subject and then come back here and process it and we'll talk about different techniques uh, different techniques about how to capture images to set yourself up for the best uh, photo stitch product uh, finished product